Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Chewy LapBook Air. This is a 14.1 inch laptop, fanless, running with an Apollo Lake processor. We'll be putting it through its paces here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed this content before it was uploaded. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. These sell for anywhere from $389 to about $450, depending on what sales are going on on GearBest at the moment. Uh, two days ago it was $389, this morning it was $425, tomorrow it might be $389 again. So uh, take a look, but I think you shouldn't pay more than uh, $400 for this if you can. Now it's got a 14.1 inch display, it's IPS. Uh, looks pretty nice actually, decent viewing angles. It's not too cold, it's not too much on the blue side like we've seen many of these cheaper laptops have, so that's a good thing. And I found that the bleed through isn't very noticeable either, at least on the one they sent me here. So all in, uh, decent display here for the price point. Nice to have a full 1080p display at 14.1 inches on this one. Uh, this machine is powered by an Intel Apollo Lake N3450 processor. It is fanless and that will introduce some issues that I'll talk about a little later in the video. 8 gigabytes of RAM on this one for the price point, 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage that's upgradable. Uh, they did partition it though into a Windows system partition and then a regular data partition, so they've split things up a little bit. Not crazy about how they did that, but of course you can always go back in and uh, reformat it if you wish to do so. And there are some expandability options here that I'll get to in a second uh, down on the bottom of the laptop. You can't upgrade the RAM though, uh, just the hard drive, and they've got a pretty clever way to do that. We'll look at that when we go through the rest of the hardware here. And it weighs about 3.2 pounds or 1.4 kilograms. It's a pretty heavy laptop for its specifications, but it does feel very nice. It's all metal. Uh, the only real gripe I have with the build quality is that the display does bounce around a little bit more than it should, but otherwise decently constructed. Uh, the keyboard isn't bad either, although I'm not uh, totally crazy about it. It is backlit, which is nice to see on a lower end laptop, but uh, they've shifted all the keys over a bit to make room for this row of keys here, where you've got the home, the page up and everything. And as a result, I'm having a hard time getting used to uh, this keyboard layout. I'm making mistakes while I'm typing. I could probably get used to it, but I've been typing on a standard layout keyboard for a long period of time, and any change or shift to that uh, throws me off, and I'm getting thrown off on this one. But the keys do have very deep travel to them. They're very nicely spaced apart, so I think if I used this more and got used to it, it probably wouldn't be as much of an issue. Uh, the trackpad looks nice, but it doesn't track as well as I would like. It doesn't feel as accurate to me. Uh, it does have a very firm click to it, which is nice, but uh, by and large, I haven't been all that crazy about the trackpad. It's usable, but I've seen better out there, and this one certainly is not among the best. Now, it does have a few ports on board. Uh, you've got a mini HDMI out here for connecting an external display. Your power adapter goes in here. Uh, the one issue I encountered with the power adapter, and I'll grab it from off the floor here, is that uh, the cable it came with was lacking the US adapter. So as a result, I had to get a uh, power cable that fit that to uh, interface with my US outlets here. So if you are buying this in the United States, uh, plan to pick up one of these cables to get uh, this interfaced out to your power jack because I think it came with a European uh, outlet adapter in the box. So that was my experience. Yours may vary. It has a micro SD card slot here. The cards will sit flush in here as well so you can augment some of that onboard storage. There's an additional storage option you'll see in a second. Over here is your headphone jack and then you've got two USB 3.0 ports here. Uh, no USB type C on this one. Now on the bottom here you've got the ability to add additional storage through an M2 to SATA drive, so you can get faster storage and you can pop it right in here. I did open this panel up a little earlier. It is empty, so you will have to get that M2 SATA drive, but uh, that is a nice little storage option that's very easily accessible, so you don't have to pull off the entire case to do that. Again, the RAM on this one is not expandable beyond the eight that it came with. The speakers are also here on the bottom. Uh, they do not sound all that great at all. They're very low, very tinny, so if you want better audio quality, connect up some Bluetooth headphones or plug headphones physically into the headphone jack. Uh, you're not going to be too pleased with the audio quality out of this one. And the battery life we tested on this one came in around five or six hours. That was doing some basic stuff like web browsing, uh, watching some videos and whatnot. I think if you're doing less, you might be able to squeak a little bit more out of the battery on here, but came in about where I would expect it to be given the price point and display that 
that it's using and uh, the processor on board here. So let's move on now to performance and see how this thing does with those basic tasks as well as some gaming and a few other things as well. So let's kick things off with some YouTube watching. We've got my YouTube channel up here with a 1080p video running at 60 frames per second. Even when you have some of these fast motion scenes, we're not dropping any frames, so that's a good thing. All is good there and working as expected. Uh, we'll take a look at some web browsing as well. We'll go visit uh, nasa.gov, which is a pretty multimedia rich site. We'll take a look at that uh, asteroid from another solar system that came and visited us. We'll uh, load up that article and see how fast everything comes together there. So pretty quick and responsive here. Uh, this does support wireless AC in addition to the 2.4 gigahertz bands as well. So uh, all in a pretty decent uh, device for web browsing and video watching and that sort of thing. And we also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test on Google Chrome and on that benchmark we got a score of 34.3 which puts it right in line with the Jumper Easy Book 3 Pro we looked at a couple of weeks ago running with the exact same processor. And we also ran Microsoft Word on here to check out the newsletter template we like to play around with and I think for uh, light and even moderate document editing it's probably going to do pretty well. You could probably run Photoshop and a few other things on here but you're not going to get uh, the best performance but if you're just editing a few documents together uh, it should do well with that. I don't recommend these for video editing. They can edit edit video, but uh, the hotter they get, the slower they go. And we'll explore some of those thermal uh, issues in a minute when we talk about gaming. And speaking of gaming, these again are not really great gaming machines either, but uh, they do run some games. We always like to look at some of the lower end stuff and some older games. And we'll start off with Minecraft. And there we got a frame rate of around 20 to 30 frames per second at 1080p uh, running with the Optifine performance enhancing plugin on there. So we were able to squeak out somewhat decent performance. If we turn settings down and went down to 720p, for example, we would certainly do better with it. So good enough for Minecraft. We also ran Half-Life 2, which is an older game, about 12 years old now. And we also got decent frame rates out of that at its 1080p resolution. Uh, we were running there around 30 to 40 frames per second. It does vary based on uh, where you go in the game and how complex the environments are, but generally you should be able to keep it at around 30 frames per second and have a playable experience with that old game and many others like it too. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 1,767. That's a little bit better than what we saw on the EasyBook 3 Pro on the graphics side, although uh, the CPU was running a little slower. My guess is that uh, this thing started throttling in the middle of that test, so we saw a little less CPU performance when it got to uh, the physics portion of the benchmark, which usually runs at the end. And speaking of thermal performance, we got a failing grade of 79.1% on the 3D Mark stress test. The processor got up to 62 degrees Celsius or 143 degrees Fahrenheit. And what that test does is it runs one of these benchmarks over and over again to see what happens to the computer when it's placed under load for a long period of time. Now, the hotter these things get, uh, the slower they will run because the processor turns itself down in order not to overheat. And as a result, uh, you'll see some varying performance in games and other things that uh, really stress out the processor like video editing here. So you won't get uh, consistent performance all the time just because there's no fan to blow away the uh, heat that it's generating. The only way it can, it can basically cool itself is to slow itself down. And you're seeing a lot of that uh, not only with this laptop, but other fanless laptops based on the same architecture. And we also ran our Kodi test with a high bit rate HEVC 10-bit file at 4K. And uh, that file played back just fine on here. We had one skip frame on the video and it did that every time we ran it. Uh, no real issues playing back some of that higher end uh, video on here. Now we did try to install some alternative operating systems on here, but we could not get them to boot up. I went through the BIOS and tried to tweak a few things and could not get anything to work on here. So uh, it's possible it can run those operating systems. We've seen other similar devices here with this same processor run uh, Linux quite nicely, but for whatever reason, this one just doesn't want to boot those up. Uh, the good news though is that you do get a, an activated version of Windows 10 with your purchase price here, and it looks like I've got the US English version on this particular computer. So all in, not a bad little device actually. It's very nicely constructed. My only gripe here is the uh, display being a little wobbly, but otherwise a, a pretty nice little value here, I think, given the specifications, the storage upgradeability, uh, and the fact that it's got a, a nice looking IPS display as well. So not a bad deal if you can get it for under 400 bucks. I got links down below in the video description. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Lon Seidman, and thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.